So up next, we have with us Hubert Centers. Now, Hubert Centers is absolutely someone you would consider a skilled professional day trader and a successful entrepreneur. Hubert has a philosophy, which is the following. If you need to accomplish something in life, find someone who's passionate about the topic of your interest and learn everything they know about it. That philosophy has made Hubert a successful day trader today, and he's a firm believer that you need to have your own style and method of trading that works for you. Hubert today is going to be showing us the three secret sig signals to help you find better trades. Hubert, it's all yours. All right, let's do a quick audio check. Audio check one, two. I just need to make sure because sometimes I hit the wrong buttons and I just want to make sure that you can, in fact, hear me. All right, let me see if I can get some yeses in the chat box here. I think I'm good to go. There we go. All right, and then you should also be able to see my screen. Currently, right now, I'm short gold at 1314 on one contract, and I originally only, only risked $300 on this entire trade. And as of today, right now, as it's ticking along, you can see this is 3470. This is not a demo account. This is one of my smaller intraday day trading accounts. I've been in this trade for two or three days, not, not that long. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly how I did this trade. It is not complicated. It is not hard. And you should be able to pick it up all at the end of this webinar. Now, also, make sure that you uh, go to Norm's page. All of the psychological stuff is the most important thing that you can learn. Like I can show you how to do some things, but if um, if you're not set up uh, mentally and emotionally how to uh, handle the situation, it'll mess you up a little bit. So let's see if we got a little bit of hold on. There we go. Let me mute a mic. There we go. All right, cool. So Norm stuff's really good. I've been using the Discipline Trader stuff for a very long time, even going back to the day where I've got his subliminal uh, audio CDs, and they're really, really good. So you should definitely pick up whatever Norm offered you. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to put my PowerPoint on and show you exactly how I did this trade set up. And like I said, by the end of this webinar, um, give me a time thing. How much time do I have from now? so that I don't go over. Am I going to 12 o'clock? Is that what I'm going to? Somebody just give me a, I think that's what I'm going to, right? I still, I want to make sure I don't step on anybody else's toes. Yes, that's correct, Hubert. I apologize. I was muted. 12 o'clock. All right, cool. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you. Now, do you see a, a big red sign that says warning? Does everybody see that? I have to do this. I am registered. I am a series three and I'm a series 30. And if I don't read this, I don't have to read it word for word. I'll do a better job of trying to scare you out of trading in general. Uh, I, I will end up with a fine from the CFTC or the NFA, which I do not want. And I could potentially end up in a jail cell with Bubba in an orange suit. I'm not going to prison for anybody. So let's make sure we're clear on that. All right. So trading and investing are risky. You are playing with real money. We're not talking about demo accounts here. You should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. If you're trying to make your mortgage payment or if you've got mouths to feeds, for the love of God, don't do this. This stuff is risky. Does everybody understand the disclaimer? Now, I'm from Kentucky. You can probably hear the southern drawl or twang or the redneckness in my voice, right? So I go a step further. I go, look, trading will probably end up for most of you like a, a bad country song. Your wife's going to leave you. Your kid's going to hate you. Your dog's going to die, and they're going to repossess your truck and your home. Does everybody understand how risky it is? Just give me a visual yes. So if, if any of this gets audited, everybody know that I did the solid thing and tried to scare you the heck away from this. All right? All right, cool. Great. Now we're all on the same page. Now, that being said, let's get on with it. My name's Hubert Sinners. This is my no BS approach to trading and investing. In the trading and investing community, I'm kind of known for the guy that's a straight shooter, whatever that means. I just tell you how... I just tell you what I think about a, a, a given situation. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So, and sometimes it gets me in trouble with uh, some of the uh, the exchanges and the brokerage firms because I'll kind of say it how it is. But you know what? I get to sleep like a baby every night. All right. So here is a picture of some of the folks. Uh, now, like I said, trading is very risky. I was born uh, in the hills of Eastern Kentucky, uh, and um, I have been able to uh, be, I guess you could say, quote quote unquote successful by getting around and hanging around other successful driven and in general hardworking smart people. So although I believe trading and investing is very hard, some of the three best investments you can have trading and investing, real estate, or your own successful business. 
all three of those will help you help you build a lot of wealth if you know what you're doing. That's what I truly believe, even though I had to read the disclaimer and scare you off. So this little this little young lady right here is actually she's actually six inches shorter than that because she's got six inch heels. That's Paula Abdul. That's Richard Branson. This is me, the guy with the big catfish head right here, the evil guy speaking to you right now. I never wear these little monkey shoots unless somebody just shows up and goes, "Hey, we need some stuff for some headshots." I don't know why you need a headshot for me. I'm not famous for doing anything. This is the actual desk that I'm in front of. It's actually a pretty decent little cool little office. I've got I call it the 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 hidden layer, the back cave because I have a bookcase shelf that opens up with a press of a button that opens up into like a little 1500 square foot office and I've got this little stand up desk where you hit a button and it goes up and down. It's just it's like trader porn, right? I got a lot of different video uh, different screens that do different stuff. This guy's not as mean as he seems on TV. He's a really nice guy. And all these people I'm either in a mastermind with where we consult with each other and help each other. And, and no, Kevin's, they're, they're all pretty decent guys. Me and Richard, we always talk about like uh, how we both suffer from dyslexia and we're still able to dress ourselves and, and, and add up numbers in our heads. It's kind of funny. And then Dave, I help his organization. I teach those guys down there how to run webinars so that they make more money on that stuff. So like I said, even though it's hard does not mean it's impossible. If a redneck from Eastern Kentucky can do this, you should be able to do it too, right? So congratulations, you're in the right place at the right time and here's why. So I'm gonna show you how to take your trading to the next level. This is my general synopsis of this webinar. I'm gonna show you a very easy way for you to scan the markets, find some good trades, and take your trading to the next level. Now, it's, it's gonna be under a couple of assumptions. I'm gonna assume that you like candlestick charts. In other words, that you like trading technicals and you're not just a pure, uh, a pure uh, fundamental guy, okay? You'll have a new opportunity to take your trading to the next level. So what does this work on? I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. Number one, this works on stocks. This works on options. This works on futures. This works on Forex. It works on bonds. It works on gold. And it works on most commodities. Now, it works pretty good on most stuff. It works really good on some things. But I'm going to show you some back testing models here. And then at the end of the webinar presentation, when I go into QA, I'm going to do chart after chart after chart after chart. Now, you can see here, I've got a little trade station alert going up here. I'm going to remove that. And then I'll go back to my PowerPoint here. Sorry for going back and forth here on you. Just going to knock an alert out there. All right. So let's get uh, on with the presentation because you're here to learn how to do this stuff. So uh, this is going to be different, but in a good way. I like to have fun. I never really take what I do for a living. Uh, well, I should say I take what I do for a living very serious. I never really take myself very seriously. Uh, life is too short, and if you're not having fun, what's the point, right? So let's go on to the back testing results here. You can see in the S&P 500 of the past five years, if you back tested this methodology on all the stocks in the S&P 500, it would have worked on 430 out of 500. That's not too shabby. That's about an 86% chance that it'll work on out of, you know, if there's 500 stocks, it worked on 430. So not too shabby, 86%. If you would have done the exact strategy I'm going to teach you, you would have had a 33% if you took every signal. And that's if you took the long, the short, and then the long, and then the short, and then the long, and then the short. Now, if you remove the counter trend signals, now, I think we can all assume that right now we're probably in a uptrend in the indexes, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. Does everybody agree with that? What you can do is you can increase your return from 33% to 79% is if you'll quit doing shorting here and covering here, and if you'll just focus on going long here and exiting up here. So in other words, if you're in a valid uptrend, you're not gonna fight that per se. You can a little bit. You can do some counter trend trades. Just don't do all of them. You wanna focus on the ones where you buy pullbacks instead of buying, uh, or instead of shorting breakouts, okay? So that'll help you out a lot in there, and I'll show you how to do that. And that's across all stocks in the S&P 500, and if you just wait for a three, this says day, and it really should be bar, a three bar confirmation. And this is gonna work really good for day trades and or swing trades. Got some more alerts going off here. Uh, sorry about that, I will remove those. Sorry guys, I actually really trade, so when I do these webinars during the intraday session, it actually uh, will uh, mess with me a little bit, because I've got a lot of lines that give me alerts, so I know what I'm doing. But that's a good thing because all the information that I'm I'm showing you is really applicable to what you're going to be doing throughout the day and in the swing basis. All right. So next slide. 
It's been profitable on 29 currencies over the past 10 years. All right. Uh, and if you use these time frames, the daily, the hourly, and the 10 minute, the daily, the hourly, and the 10 minute, that's going to give you a really good filter mechanism. Now, this is one of the most important slides in the presentation, so take good notes on this one right here. All right. So time frame selection. So what I'm going to be teaching you is Ichimoku, Ichimoku, and it's called Cloud Charts. It's just a technical analysis tool. It's free. I'm not here to sell you the indicator. It's on almost every daggone platform out there, and if it's not on your platform, you need a better platform. So here's how it works. So number one, you're going to figure out how long you think you're going to be in the trade. So if I think I'm going to be in the trade for a few days right here, short term, then what I'm going to be looking at is a 60 minute time frame. Okay. 60 minute time frame. Now, if I think I'm going to be in the, in the trade for potentially weeks at a time, then I'm going to look at the daily chart. All right. And then if I think I'm going to be in the trade for, you know, a few hours, then I'm going to look at either a five minute or a 10 minute time frame. Do you, do you understand that? Does that make sense? Now, if I know I'm going to go, if I'm going to be in it for less than 60 minutes for minutes at a time, then I'm going to use either a tick chart or a minute chart. So for me, what I do is I look at a daily, I then look at a 60 minute, and then I then look at a 10 minute. So I call it D6010. Any questions on this slide? Because if you don't understand this slide, as I go throughout the webinar presentation, I might lose you a little bit. So I just want to make sure like right now there's there's over 500 people in this webinar, so I want to make sure that everybody is up to speed on this slide. Any questions so far? So if we're looking at a daily, my time horizon is going to be weak, and the cloud is going to extend 20 to 30 days. If I'm looking at an hourly chart, I'm probably going to be in it for days, and it's probably going to be three to five days. If I'm looking at an hourly time horizon, then I know I've got two to four hours in this trade. This is being recorded. Right, got it clear. All right, cool. All right. All right. This is what you want right here. This is the number one technique used in Japan seven years back to back in a row. It's, it's the number one best selling book in Japan. Heads up, getting it translated is a, is a nightmare and a pain in the wazoo. There are some decent books in, on Ichimoku in the English language, but you have to read like five or six of them in order to get a nugget out of one or two or three of the books. Okay. So how do you decide which time frame to use? It really depends on your risk factor, Jim. You're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. When I show you this, it's going to kind of look like spaghetti soup on a chart. And then I'll break down each component for you, and then you'll know exactly what to use. It's really good. It gives you trends and signals that are very, very clear. It's designed to produce very clear signals. Ichimoku in Japanese translated means at a glance. So you'll know exactly what's going on really quickly. All right. So let's move on to the edge for you now. So this is one of the only indicators in the world that I personally know of. There's only a few that do this that gives you past, present, and future information on your chart. All right. So what that means is when you're looking at it, it's going to give you what happened in the past, what's happening now, and what it thinks is going to happen in the future. So that's really powerful to use with your trading. So this is a snapshot of the ES. Now these may be older snapshots because for a PowerPoint you just grab them and you teach at the end of the presentation. I am going to show you, all right, I am going to show you live chart after live chart after live chart. So in this example what you're looking for, the first theory of Ichimoku is, is this price action above or below that cloud? And here's where I want you to interact because if you interact you're going to learn this better. What are the other indicators? So just bear with me. So is this price action above or below this blue cloud? There above. That means this is bullish for whatever we're trading here. Okay. If it was both, if it was below, hold on here. Uh, there we go. All right. If it was below, it would be bearish. Now, as you can see, this acts at a really good support point for the S and P. The cloud is going to act like a mini trampoline, a nice little soft landing, and it's going to bounce off of there. That alone is really good information. Let's go to the next chart. Now, the next line that we're looking at is the yellow line. It's called a turning line, and it's going to be your fast moving average. Now, believe it or not, it's not a moving average at all. It's a midpoint average, and I'll show you how we calculate that. And that's going to be a nine-point midpoint average, this yellow line. 
So is the price action above or below the yellow line? It's above. That's super bullish. And you can see if it sells into that, it tends to bounce off of that also. And then the third piece to it is, all right, so this is the turning line. This is the standard line. This is called the cloud, okay? So now we've got the stand, we've got the turning line and the standard line. If this thing breaks through the yellow, where do you think the next place that it's going to go to? Where would it be? If it broke through the turning line, the yellow line, then the next support area would be the purple, right? And then if the purple line broke, we're like, oh, man, well, better hope the cloud, cloud holds. If the cloud doesn't hold, and then we start getting some price action down here, then we know, okay, this is a very new trend reversal, and we can short it when it gets below the cloud because it's going to crater on itself. And that's what I'm doing with gold right now. Right now, it's a top above the cloud, so we're going to stay long in most cases. If you're a counter trend trader, you would short it when it went below the yellow and target the purple. You'd also short it below the purple as it goes to the blue. I'm more of a trend trader, so what I do is I go with the trends as opposed to against them. Now, the last line here is called the lagging line. So we got the lagging line, we've got the turning line, and then we've got the standard line, and then we have the cloud, okay? Now, the lagging line is just what the price action did in the past. So this is your past part, this is your present part, and then this is your future part. You see where this is the price action right now? Well, the cloud right now is pointing sideways to slightly up, and it's blue, so that's telegraphing or telling you that the future price projection of the ES should be up. So now we got past, present, and future. Now, let's go through and, and, and break these down a little bit clearer, okay? So um, this is Apple. This is an older chart snap shot. You can see it had massive moves to the upside, and then eventually it broke and went below the turning in the standard line, and then it went below the cloud. Do you see that? When you get three bars below the cloud, and you also get the lagging line below the cloud, then this is a confirmation that you're going to have a very good continuation and a new trend to the downside. Notice that when, when uh, Apple got down here, the confirmation of the lagging line did not confirm, therefore it bounced really good. So in this case, it's showing you a valid uptrend and a super valid downtrend. Now, the reason you know this is the turning line, the turning line is always the, the one that's closest to the price action, okay? And then this is going to be the standard line. Here's your cloud. It's red. And then your lagging line is the one that's always lagging the price action. Here's how we calculate that. You take, the, you let, you take today and you count back nine days. You go nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, right? This would be today. You count back nine bars. You look for the low. You look for the high. You add those two things together, and then you divide them by two, and that gives you your 450.07, and that's that red line right there. Do you wait for the lagging line to go short? You definitely can if you're doing that. That's going to give you a, a better uh, an entry, a better uh, conservative entry. So that was, the, that was the turning line. That's how you calculate. Now, the standard line is the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars, and you're going to divide them by two. That number is going to be your midpoint. So we've already got our, what, what's the little red one right here? What's it called? What, turning line. And then the green line is going to be the standard line. And all you do is the standard line is the one that's next closest to the price action. It's calculated the same way. You, you take today, you count back 26 bars, you look for the low, you look for the high, you add those two together, and you divide it by two, and you come out with this number, 425.42. Heads up, I don't do any of this calculations. The software in the package does it all for me. I don't have to do anything. The indicator does it all for you. And if you don't have Ichimoku on your charting platforms, change platforms. All the decent good ones, all the major ones has it. Uh, the magic of 926 calculations, please. Uh, what is the magic? There's no magic at all. It's just, that's just what the, 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 the calculations for the midpoint are. There's nothing magic in the markets. That's just what these are calculated using. Now, the cloud span A and B, this is cloud span A, and it's the midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars in the future. So all that means is we're going to take the midpoint from the turning line, which is the one that's close, so you can think about that as the fast moving average, and the, uh, the uh, standard line, which is more of the medium moving average, and you're going to take the distance between those two and the midpoint, and you're going to shift it in the future 26 bars. That's going to give you the cloud. So you're going to go from here to here, midpoint, shift it 26 bars in the future. Now, cloud span B, which is the other side of the cloud, is where you're going to take um, 
this price bar and you're going to go back so many bars you're going to take the midpoint of that and shift it forward here's the physical definition of that it's it's the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions shifted so if this was today that would be 52 there's the midpoint and then it's shifted 26 bars in the future so that's where you're coming up with all those calculations now you don't need to know any of that i know some people like to know the specifics of how it's calculated uh, I know if I put uh, gas in the car or pay the electric bill, the lights come on. I, I know how an internal combustion engine works. It's just not required as long as there's fuel in the vehicle. So here's the lagging line. The lagging line is just the price action, and it's shifted back 26 bars. So this price right here and this blue line is shifted back 26 bars. All right. So uh, what, in, what indicates Apple in the chart, I'm not sure of. So I'll show you. We'll do all live charts here in a little bit. So in this example, here is today's price action. The lagging line is shifted back 26 bars. All right, so let's talk about some really good signals that you're going to want to pay attention when you're doing Ichimoku. Also, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to show you a free website that will help you scan for better trades. When the lagging line crosses the cloud, that is a good signal. When the price crosses the cloud, that is a good signal. When the price and the lagging line touch the cloud, that is also a really good signal. And when the cloud spans cross, that is a, a decent signal. And when the turning line and the standard lines cross, that's a weaker signal. So this is going from strongest to weakest. So from conservative to aggressive. I like the top three way better than I like most. So let's dig in and show you some of these examples. So the strongest signal is when the lagging line crosses the cloud. If you have three bars of price action below the cloud and you let the lagging line cross, can you see how powerful the signal is? You see how much Apple just got destroyed on this? Now, these are older slides, yes. But like I said, at the end of the presentation, I will show you updated charts and we'll do this in real time. When the price action crosses the cloud is the second best signal you can get. Now, this one will go first, this one will go second because the price action is going to lead the lagging line. If you can get three bars below the cloud and then also get a lagging line confirmation, those are primo setups and those are the ones that you're going to want to take. They're money makers for me and they'll probably be money makers for you too. All right. Now, if you're right now in this snapshot, would you consider Apple a long or a short? Is the price action below the cloud or is the price action above the cloud? Just right now in this snapshot, what are we looking at? Well, we've got the lagging line that's touching the bottom of the cloud, and we've got the price action has not broken through the red cloud, so it would still be a decent short into, until you get at least three bars above the cloud and until you get this blue line to cross the little creek with you. Then once that happens, you'd be like, oh, okay, now is a great time to go long Apple. And it would probably end up about anywhere from 490 to 506 would be the area, and then boom, you'd take off. Now, Obviously, these are old charts because now Apple split, but like I said at the end, I'll show you all live stuff. All right. Now, if you're a little bit more aggressive and you're sitting there going, this is great. I don't like trading the trend. I want to be a counter trend trader. That's okay. The system's really going to work for you too. You're still in a valid uptrend and you start seeing where the red and the green cross and the price action crosses below both of those. Well, then your first target's going to be top of the cloud and then bottom of the cloud. Okay. Now, at that point, now you're into a new trend because... The price action broke below the cloud, and then you can see where the green, where the red crosses the green, and then where the red crosses the green again, that's a good short, and you're going to get a lot of follow through. So you're just going to be doing a crisscross trade on the 9 and 26 midpoint averages. Now remember, they're not moving averages, they're midpoint averages, they're calculated different. All right, bullish signals. Uh, price above the cloud is bullish. Uh, the price in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side, which I've already showed you. The lagging line crosses the cloud is the main signal of a trend change. Those are the most important ones, all right? And then it's really the only ones I have time enough to show you today. So on the bearish signals, price is below the cloud. That's bearish. Price in the cloud are bearish if they come from the bearish side, in other words, underneath the cloud. And then the lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. And then the price crossing the clouds are earlier but less reliable warning signals. So let's go through some of this. All right. So follow the backtesting rules. Um, I gave you the backtesting rules. Let's do this. Let's go through some 
Uh, oh, stops. A lot of people want to know the monthly, uh, the, the time frames that I like. I use a daily, an hourly, and a 10-minute time frame. Those work across a bunch of different types of setups, okay? Are the webinars recorded? Yeah, they'll be recorded, and you'll be sending a link out. So let's talk about stops. Stops are always a personal decision. Time frames and stops are really, really important for a lot of folks. So some of the best stops that you can use are called a parabolic SAR. When you do a lot of back testing and stuff like I do, you kind of want to do a shortcut methodology to take your emotional input out of the game because I don't know about you, but usually all the bad trades are associated with me just messing up, either getting too greedy or getting too fearful that I'm going to lose money. So when you look at this, put a parabolic SAR on your chart and it'll help you trail your stop loss. If you're also on a stop loss, if you're long, the bottom of the cloud will act as a good stop loss. If you're short, the top of the cloud will act as a good set, trade setup. All right, so let's take a look at some live charts, and I want to do these in example. And I'm going to show you kind of how I go through. I'm going to discard that. I'm going to show you how I go through scanning through some stuff. But before I do that, I want to show you this trade that I've got going on in gold. Now, all right, so as, as we've been playing along here, you can see that some of my profits are evaporating. Now, it's not terrible. As of today, I was up 39.70, which is not bad on a one lot. Right now, I'm up 32.30. So I want to walk you through this trade setup based on what I've already taught you. So first, the contract that I'm trading is GC. So let's go down here and grab the GC contract. And I'm trading the GC Z14, which is the December contract. So what I'm looking at here is I have shorted gold right in this area, okay? Now, the reason I shorted is because we were trading sideways. Index was, the indexes are in a good uptrend. Usually, if the indexes go up, gold will go down. It's a good, it's a good analogy or a correlation. It doesn't always work. But do you see where the price action here, as I'm looking at this with my pointer, it crossed below both the turning and the standard line? Do you see that? Well, I shorted this thing right here at 1314, okay? I knew that the daily was looking like it was rolling over. So what I did is I said, okay, I'm going to look at a 10-minute signal. So now I'm going to blow up the 10-minute signal. So let's see what day that is. Where, where did I get short at? I'm going to look at the 10-minute signal. And then over here where I had that 13-14 that, uh, area right in here, you see this right here? You see where this thing broke down and went below the cloud on a 10-minute? Do you see that? That's where I got short. Now, that's where I got short, but what kept me short was the 60-minute signal. Notice here. Here's where I notice this right here. Can you see this? You see on the 60-minute signal where the 60-minute the candlestick broke below the cloud and it sold off? Now, I'm short this. Where is going to be overhead resistance for me now? Since I'm short right here on a 60-minute, the daily looked like a good short. The 60 minute looked like a good short, so I used the 10 as a trigger intraday. And I was fortunate enough to cut, catch a good trade. That's right, bottom of the cloud. So if I short here, you can see where's the overhead resistance? Boom, right there, there's resistance. So it gives me past, present, and then some me future resistance is going to be right here. Like right now, should I cover right here? Or is that going to be overhead resistance where it'll probably stop and then roll back over again? For me, it's Friday. Gold's had a good week, so I'll probably take some of my profits off the table. I could cover here if I wanted to. A better cover point, a good stop loss for this trade is going to be the top of the cloud, okay? So in this instance, right here would be a better stop loss for me would be the top of the cloud instead of the bottom of the cloud because, as you can see, it touches the cloud and then goes back underwater. So in other words, I'm letting it come up and breathe, and I'm dunking its head, and I'm trying to drown it again. Does the trade make sense to you? It takes a very complicated system, breaks it down into one, two, three, simple, easy, and I'm looking for stuff that's either above the cloud or below the cloud to trade. I want to be on the right side. I want to be on the right side of the daily trend if I can be, and then I know if I'm going to be in this trade for, what, if it's a 60-minute signal, how many days is that going to be good for me? What did our time frame cheat sheet tell us? Three to five days, right? So here's day one, two, three three, four, five. I'm actually squeezing another day out of this, right? So three to five days, it's done a perfect job of getting me in a good short 
and and somebody's asking, can you could you explain cover? If you're short, you buy back to cover. Do you wait for the 60 minute bar to close for entry? You definitely can, but now if you're only trading a single lot, like in this case, in this this is one of my smaller accounts. If I'm only trading a single lot, as you can see, I only have one here. I've trailed my stop down, and you can see I'm short one position. Um, this is a parabolic SAR. I was going to I'm going to tell you about that next. You can see how this gets you short here and keeps you short, 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 and then it goes okay. You now should be covering some of your contracts right here in this area. So a parabolic SAR is a really good trailing mechanism for that. So I have got uh, different trade setups in different sub accounts. In a swing, a swing trading account, I've got multiple lots. In this one, for you know, for three to five days, that's a pretty good profit move here in gold. So you can see I've got a trailing stop right here, one, two, three, four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this in. And we've already, we're have already bouncing five bucks. That's not bad. If you look at the daily chart, let's go back to the daily chart here on gold real quick. And you can see that's a good little from 13.14 down to 12. Oh, 12.78. Let's see where that is. Down to, yeah, 12.74. That's a pretty good move. So if we bounced about half of that from here to here, a normal bounce would be top of the cloud, which would be 12.95. I don't really want to give all that back away, so I'll probably lock in some profits. <clears throat> yes. The webinar is being recorded, and you will get a recording of the event. All right, so any questions on the gold trade so far of how I did it and why I did it? Gold was rolling over on a daily. Rolling over on a 60, got an entry on both a 60 and a 10 minute. And I'm just going to try to ride that as far as I possibly can. I will give you a little piece of advice. A lot of people will trail the stop so daggone clear that they will choke the life out of the trade. Anybody in here a serial killer of profits? Raise your hand if you just trail trail stop so tight, like you're like, oh, I gotta I gotta trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop, and you're like. And it's it's almost like you you are a serial killer of profits, right? It's just it's Dexter, right? The the Dexter trailing stop, right? Because you're like, oh my God, I've got three thousand dollars in a trade that I only risked three hundred dollars on. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trail my stop down here to twelve eighty one eighty. That way I'll lock in my thirty two hundred. And in two seconds, gold sneezes, boom, you're out of it. And now Monday or Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, when it drops another forty points, you're sitting there going, Dag on it, I had three grand in the trade, I took it. I could have had six grand. All right. Anything special about 180 minutes? No, it's just an hour times three. You could use all I did for that is super easy. I said, okay, let's let's see what kind of curve fit this. I could do like a 60 minute time frame, and it gets me in and out, and I'm not really wanting that. I could do a 120 minute time frame. That's decent. It's not bad. It would have got me out here, and then 180, which is just 60 times three, 18. It just gets you. It kept, keeps me in longer. Is all it is. There's nothing special about it. Uh, is that your live account? Yes, this is my live account. It is a real live trading account, yes. So there's my account number right there in, in the upper left-hand corner. This is a real live trading account. Now, I've got a, a bigger, badder swing trade going on this trade right now. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, why did you only risk $300? Uh, because it was an intraday setup, and on intraday setups, I only risk $300. If it was an overnight setup, I would risk anywhere from $600 to $1,000 to try to make uh, two to eight thousand dollars. So for me, the risk to reward ratio is really good on this trade set. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like to book uh, a trade that only risks three hundred dollars. Uh, if if so good for you because many won't show their account. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't have a problem showing my real live account. I've got multiple accounts. I've got smaller accounts, medium size accounts, and larger accounts. Trading live in front of people does really not not scare me. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a juggling act. It gets to be a little bit much when you're live trading, doing a webinar presentation, and then also taking questions. That gets a little bit off. Uh, do you use, uh, so you use a stop loss. Yeah. So for me on this trade setup, my stop loss, originally I was risking $300. So my stop loss was right here. I'm going to show you moving it around. Bing. So originally my stop was 1317. Now I needed to trail my stop down as of the other day down to 1281. 1281.96 right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how this works. So if I would have done the trade 100% properly, which I'm not perfect, I'm a human, I'm going to show you that my stop should be 1281, and we're just going to call it 1282. So I'm going to grab our stop from up here, and we're going to bring it down to 1282 and see if I get stopped out of it. So I'm going to grab it down here, and don't cry for me. It's been a decent trade. 
We're going to go to all the way down here to 1282. Even though it says 1281.96, we're just going to round up two pennies. All right, we're going to come down here, come down here. I just have to grab it, drag it, and pull it down. At what point do you start trailing your stop? I usually give it a few days. I, I don't trail the stops really aggressively because I like making a lot of money. I like making a small pile of money into a larger pile of money. So I should be at 1282. 1282, I'm almost there. Sorry for the taking so long. The system's a little slow. All right, so 1282 is where. There we go. We're getting close. All right, so 1282 is going to be right there. Now, if this was a trade that I was just in and I trailed the stop that aggressively, I will tell you that we will get stopped out of this trade, and poor us, we're going to make 3230 today. Okay? Uh, you can't see chat and go to webinar, only the presenters can. So does everybody understand why I did that? Because this parabolic SCR said dot, dot, dot. You should have moved your stop yesterday, Hubert, to right there. Why didn't you? Eh, I just forgot. And I was trying to, I was, I got a little greedy. I wanted to see if it would drop a little bit more for me. And unfortunately, it didn't. I've got a little double or triple bottom here. And now this is telling me, all right, well, you should have. I still have time to adjust for my mistake. So did my mistake cost me a little bit of money? A little bit, but not too much. Okay. Your favorite, your favorite trade is a daily 60-10. So your entry and stop on which time frame, 60 minute or 10 minute. So if I'm intraday trading on gold, I usually use a 300 point stop loss, which is three points. If it's on something else, it just all depends because every, every market has its own individual stop loss because they all move differently. If I'm doing a daily chart, then the stops are going to be bigger. If I'm doing an intraday chart like a 10-minute or a 60-minute time frame, they're going to be a lot smaller because I don't want to risk that. Now, you're about to see me live here in just a few seconds get stopped out because it's get, being bit up. I'm going to change this over here to a – let's just do it to a one-minute chart here on gold, and you can see that this is where the price action, if it goes to – 1282 I will be filled and we will cover and we'll bank our three grand all right so that's how you do it let me show you a way and I'll hear order filled in my in my earpiece when uh, it gets order filled I only got about 20 more minutes and I want to make sure I get all your questions answered and stuff so any questions on that now you can do this in anything can you please put back up the bearish signal side uh, it'll be in uh, the webinar presentation I want to keep it on live charts for you Let's go through and let me show you how I scan for some stuff. What I do is I've got a, a radar screen here, and I can scan. I hope this changed for you. Do you see where this says above the cloud, below the cloud? And we've already, uh, we've already said that it's very important to know, very important to know where the cloud is. So what I can do is on the futures markets, I can go through them individually, and I can go, okay, let's take a look at the ES. What's the ES look like? Without me t cheating or telling you the answer, what, what was this? Is this a valid uptrend, downtrend, or what? When this went into the cloud, should you have been a buyer or a seller? And then when it bounced out of this cloud and went back above the turning line and the standard line, should you have been a buyer or a seller? This, is all, this was already on the chart. This is not after the fact. You buy here, you take a little bit on the chin. You buy here, and you're happy. You buy here, and you're real happy. And now that you're up around these new highs, you sell into you sell into that. All right, let's take a look at the YM. What did the YM tell you? It's a valid, massive uptrend. The cloud's doing well. Should you have sold here? Sure, you could have. You could have sold here and covered at the top of the cloud and the bottom of the cloud, but look, it bounced really well. The lagging line never really crossed the cloud, did it? So that was a little head fake, right? A little one-two. It juked and you should have jived, right? So it's a good buy signal down here and right here. Take a look at the NASDAQ. What's the NASDAQ tell you? NASDAQ said, please, God, short me, and I'll rip your head off, didn't it? Look at it. At any, at any time, was there a valid sell signal on this pullback? No, not really. There was a quick scalp to the downside from about 34 or 39.43 down to here, real weak, small trade. If you shorted the NASDAQ, you're hating life. All right? I am big on candlestick formation. So let's take a look at the Russell. What's the Russell telling you? Russell's telling you like, oh, my goodness, I'm weaker than most. The lagging line is lagging behind, and I can't even get above the cloud. So when you look at the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, Russell's the weakest, S&P is the strongest. The 30-year bond, is it in a valid uptrend or a downtrend right now? Should you be a buyer or a seller of the bond? Uptrend, valid uptrend, right? 
So you can do this with anything. These are the futures markets. Let's go through and see if we can scan for some trades in the stock markets. Now, watch what, I ha what's, watch what happens when I hit price location. It's going to say, hey, Hubert, CMS is a new trade. It went, it was a new above the cloud yesterday. You might want to think about getting along that if it can close above the cloud. And it's going, hey, look at CVX. It's newly above. It's trying to get above or below the cloud. Cake or Coca-Cola here. Coca-Cola was new below. These are all new below. Coca-Cola below the cloud. Let's see if we got, do we have any new above. Oh, AMD, new above. Look here. AMD, new above. And then here we've got PMCS, new above. Now, this is on a daily, all right? It'll change if I do it on a 60-minute. It'll give me different signals because a 60 is going to move quicker than a daily, right? So I'm going to open up a browser, uh, and I'm going to show you a, a website that you can use this if you don't have as powerful a software as I do. You can go to stockcharts.com, okay, stockcharts.com, and then from there, let's go S-T-O-C-K-C-H-A-R-T-S.com. I got about 15 minutes, so we still have good time. And then we're going to go to the right-hand side where it says predefined scan results, stockstarts.com. And then you're going to scroll down where it says candlestick pattern. On candlestick pattern at the bottom, you see where it says Ichimoku. And no, I didn't sneeze. That's how you pronounce it. See where it says moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. That's good information for you to have. You're going to hold down control, click, click. And now we've got two new tabs that will give us the scan mechanism. Can you trade stocks and futures through the same broker? Yes. Uh, I use TradeStation. I've got Toss, uh, Ameritrade, uh, Infinity. I've got a bunch of different brokerage firms that I use. Now, a lot of people use this site, so that the scan may not work, especially if all 500 or 600 of us are trying to use this site at the same time. It'll crash. But what will happen is once we scan, it'll give us a snapshot of all the things that are above or below the cloud that just crossed today or just crossed yesterday. And you can use that. We can't right now because all 600 of us are trying to use the scan and, and their, their servers can't handle it. But on a day basis, what this will do is this will give you a good snapshot. And I think I've got a PowerPoint of it somewhere. Let me see. Stockcharts.com. Can you repeat the instruction? Stock, uh, are you happy with TradeStation? Yeah, I, I love TradeStation. I've been using it for years. There you go. So here's a here's a scan. And then what I do is I sort it by volume. Okay? I sort that by volume, and then that's going to bring the cream to the crop because the volume, the guys that have the thickest volume will come to the top if I click the button, right? Let's see here. What is the recommended account size? That's, that's really on you. Depends on how much money you can afford to lose in the markets, right? Remember how we talked about that disclaimer? It's really depending on how much risk you want to take. And then what you do is it's, it's not filtering because all 600 of us are trying to get to this daggone thing at the same time. Let's take something. I'll just see if I can find one here. It's got decent volume. Uh, there you go. Uh, GameStop, GME, GameStop. So let's go over and look at GME. All right, GME, GME. What has GME done? All right, GME is above the cloud, so that's probably a decent long on a 60-minute. And then you can also do PMCS was on the scan. You can see, boom, slightly above the cloud on the daily. And the lagging line is actually following. You see the lagging line, the little blue line? It's following, so that PMCS is going to be a good trade. Uh, how do you get the scans for stock charts? Again, oh, it's, just, it's pretty easy. You go to stockcharts.com, stockcharts.com. And then down here where on the lower right-hand side where it says predefined scan results, you click that button, and then you have to you scroll down to candlestick patterns. And at the bottom of the candlestick patterns, Ichimoku patterns moved above or below, and then you click these. You can see there's 126 above and 173 below. And then this will just give you the volume of the stocks. I just filter it by that. That's how you do it. Uh, why is PMCS a good trade? It's a potential good trade because it's almost above the cloud. You see it right there? Like if we go over here to this, go PMCS. PMCS. Okay. It's a, it's almost on a daily. Look what it did on a 60, look what it did on a 10 minute. Did it cross? Did the 10 minute cross? Did it cross the creek? Yes. All right. Let's take a look at the 60 minute. Did the 60 minute cross? Uh, yeah, the 60-minute crossed back here again. 
So if we know that's a valid long signal, how many days is PMC going to be a good long for us? One, two, three, four, and then there's five. Make sense? Is everybody good? So what I want to do really quickly here, I want to go back to my slides, and then I'm going to let you give me all the signals or symbols that you want, and I'm going to tell you exactly what your thing's doing. Okay? So let me go back to my PowerPoint really quickly. All right, and then what we will do is we will cover all your symbols. Just give me a second. So success stories. Uh, these are some testimonials from people that's taken the course. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade and made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted it again, and took profits too early after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. Uh, this is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler. So that was from, who's that from? I think that was from, that was from Mary. All right. Uh, this is from Greg. Dude, thanks. You are likely the only reason I have kept at it with trading, and now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend your gold trading class. Thank you so much for all you do. Here's another one from Ron. The webinar series was great experience, very informative and educational, and lots of fun. But that's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities and great values. So my question to you is, will you be our next success story? So we're inviting you to join us. Now, let me talk to you about who this is for and who this is not for. Who this is for. If you are serious about making real money in the markets, then this is potentially for you. If you are looking for a proven system, then this is probably a good opportunity for you. If you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, then this is probably a good new opportunity for you. If you know that your success is tied to you taking action and not towards me telling you exactly what to do at every second of the time, right? I'm here to help you, and I'll, I'll hold your hand along the way. I just can't click the clicker for it. Excuse me. I just can't click the clicker for you, right? I can't trade for you. you got to do that part. I can give you the trades, but you have to be willing to do it. Now, who is this not for? This is not for holy grail seekers. If you're a holy grail seeker, no, no offense whatsoever. Been there, done that. I'm, I'm just not your guy, right? It's not for people that suffer from hopium. Oh my God, I hope this works. This is my last shot. This is not for people that are guru surfers that surf that jump from guru to guru to guru to guru. This is a solid foundation that will make your life easier and will probably help you make more money. If you can't make a decision, obviously this is not for you. And if you like to make things way more complicated for no good reason at all, please God, don't buy this course. It's not for you. All right, so let's let's take a look at it. There's three types of people in the world. There are people that make things happen. There are those that watch things happen. And then there are people that go, oh, shit, what just happened, right? I don't know which one you are, but that's the three types of people anytime they have a new opportunity. I don't know which one you are. So um, here is a fraction of what you'll learn in the course. You will get the number one best-selling Ichimo course on the market. You will learn my seven proven setups. You will learn the trailing stops. You will, use, you will learn the trading rules, the indicator settings, the checklist with the cheat sheet. You will learn the entries and the exits. You also learn the proper way to use a trailing stop loss and targets. And you also learn how to scan the markets with Ichimoku. You'll also learn how to filter out the best trades to take once you find all the good ones. You will never guess of what to do next. You'll never have a question like, I'm not really sure what to do next. After you take the course, you'll know exactly what to do. This is about avoiding head fakes and avoiding mistakes. Now, there are no shortcuts to long-term success. The best case scenario, what I'll be able to do is help you shorten your learning curve and get up to, up to speed faster, okay? So here is your special offer. Before I talk about it, it is 100% satisfaction guaranteed. You have absolutely zero risk, 100% no questions asked guaranteed. If you don't love it, I don't want your money. I always over deliver, period. My goal is you get 10 times the value of the money that you invest in the course. All right. If you go to real traders, or I'm sorry, real trader webinar.com forward slash Huber, and I will put this in the chat box too for you so you can see it. I'm going to limit it to the first 25 people today on this webinar. And heads up, there are over 600 people right now in this webinar. And you can also call my office. Area code 
the Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets course goes for 197. I'm going to do a how to use it with Ichimoku candlesticks. I'm going to throw in that bonus. I'm going to give you one follow-up webinar, and I'm going to give you one day of live trading that we will do 30 days after you purchase the course. We'll do a live trading webinar and a live Q&A so that if you do have any questions, I will hook you up and answer all those questions. It's already recorded. Once you hit add to cart, you get all of this for only $97 for today only and for the first 25 people that hit the add to cart button. It's area code 859-963-3445 and you go to realtraderswebinar.com forward slash Hubert. You can hear the people behind me taking your orders. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now at this time, I'm going to quit trying to talk you into it because I already think you see the value in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to live charts. I'll have the hyperlink right here above it if you want to be one of the 25, go to realtraderswebinar.com forward slash Hubert or call my office, area code 859-963-3445, all right? That's how you do it. Now, if you give me your symbol really quickly, I've got six more minutes. I don't want to go over time because going over time is just not cool. But what I'll do is I'll try to do like a lightning round, and I'll go through as many symbols as I can tell you what I think about it, all right? Here's the link above. Can everybody see the link and everybody see the telephone number? All right, let's go. T-S-L-A. And if I miss, I'm not trying to be a dickhead about anything. It's just there's a lot of people in here asking for a lot of a lot of stuff, and I might miss a few. Tesla looks good. Counter trend trade, if you short it, target will be two, 241. I'd rather buy a Tesla at 241. Looks like a way better long than a short. Probably going to go to 280. COP. COP. Short. Ooh, good little short. Look here. Aggressive short. It's below the cloud. Lagging line is almost there. Good little short with a stop of 83. Target's going to be 75. F. FSLR, FSLR. Now, don't be amazed how fast I go through this stuff. Ichimoku is designed so that you can make a super simple decision. Uh, FSLR right now, good long stop of 69, target of 75. CAT, CAT on a daily. Leave it alone. It's, it's in the cloud. When it's in the cloud like that, you just leave it alone. It's a better long than it is short because it's above the turning line and the standard line. Looks really good. Target 110, but wait until it gets out of the cloud. Crude oil at CL is a great short, and I'm swing short for crude right now. Why is crude oil a short? Look, you got three candlesticks below the cloud, and the lagging line is also below the cloud. That's a massive short. The things are going to go lower. It's also hugging the turning line. Lower, lower, lower. Crude oil is a great short. Wonderful short. Goldman Sachs here. Goldman Sachs, great long, valid uptrend above the turning line. Stop to be 174, target to be 180. USO, same thing as crude oil. USO is just going to trigger along with crude oil. It's a short a stop of $35.38 and a target of $33. Crude oil, big win on, on crude oil sale. Thanks for all the money. G-O-O-G-L, Google GL. Uh, Google is a good long with a stop of $5.88, target of $6.20-ish. D DSW, keep them coming. We still got four more minutes. DSW is sideways at best. It's below the cloud. Lagging line is below. It's going to have to break 30 to be a long. Stay short it until it breaks 30. Uh, G M C R, keep them flying. Keep them flying. If I miss, uh, your phone is not taking uh, calls. My phone people are taking calls. You can hear them in the background. They're answering the phones as fast as they can. It's just there's so many people calling right now. Leave a voicemail and they'll call you right back as soon as I as soon as I get done on the webinar. Uh, this is a good long GMCR coffee, Green Mountain Coffee. Looks good. Stop 122, target 150. They are answering phones. I can hear them. There's three people behind me right now. Great long here on Bank of America. One, two bars above the cloud. Lagging line is also above the cloud. Bank of America, new aggressive long. Target's going to be 17 to 1750. What about Zillow? Zillow, Z. Zillow's a good long. It's holding its own. As long as it stays above 139, you're good to go. Target 160. E Z, oh E N Z N E N Z N. Man, I'm dyslexic. That one just screwed, screwed me up here. Uh, it's a good long. It's a penny stock. I can't really give recommendations on penny stocks because they're so thin. It looks good. It looks like it goes to 140. Facebook. Facebook is a good long. Uh, it's holding 75. As long as it holds 71, you're looking good. Targets 80 bucks. Starbucks. S B U X. All right, Starbucks is a decent long right here at the top of the cloud. Tight stop loss of 76, target of 80 bucks. Uh, Apple, A A P L. Yo, let's update Apple. Apple, any any. What do you think? What's Apple look like? Is Apple above the cloud? Yes. Is above the turning line? Yes. Trailing stop should be 98.51. You should buy it anytime it touches the yellow or purple line or top of the cloud. Apple looks good. Looks like it's going to go north of 110. 
how are you going to tar targets I'm doing in my head because I know the the risk to reward ratios I teach you how to do that in the class at HG a little futures going on here look out at HG copper is a new long today as it crossed back above the cloud target will be 330 uh, DDD DDD so let me ask you something before I go any further I've got two more minutes does this look like an easier way to trade to scan the markets and be able to just look at the chart and go boom I know it's either going up down or sideways a lot easier right when you first look at it, it probably confuse you like god am I it looks like spaghetti on a chart but then when you start breaking it down you're like oh this is a short it's below the cloud it's probably gonna bump a 10 on the overhead resistance and go substantially lower works great on Forex works great I mean phenomenal on Forex phenomenal all right, PMCS, we already did that PMCS. That's going to be a long because it's about to cross today, right? Today we would be a little bit too early. I would like to see three candles above the cloud and the lagging line go. If we can get two more closes above the, the cloud here, we'd be good to go. WMT. WMT. Like I said, guys, go to real trade. I typed it wrong. There we go. Walmart is a short. It's below the cloud. It's going to bump its head in the overhead resistance and then collapse on itself again. MA, uh, do you use uh, this only on directionals or can this be for, it can be used on spreads too. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, MA MasterCard is a decent long, but it's sideways. Only upside potential will be 78. SHLD, SHLD. Guys, I'm running out of time. I got 60 seconds. SHLD, no surprise here. That's a short, right? It's below the cloud. Do you provide software and training? Yeah, when you buy a course, the, the phone number that you guys are calling right now, those people will be here to support you. So I will be here to support you too. We don't go anywhere. The business actually has my name on it and I have a really good name in the industry and I want to keep it that way. So if you have questions, I do my best to help you. If you don't like it, I just give you your money back. Life's too short. It, karma. I don't need the headaches, right? Heads up. I could charge $495 for this class and get it all day long. The reason I do it is I try to give you an extremely amount of good value. So for my higher end price stuff and courses, if you get good vibes from this course, then maybe you want to take how to trade gold or how to trade bonds with me, okay? So price, or, uh, SHLD is a great short target 28. Uh, PCLN. All right, guys, I'm sorry I'm out of time. I can't stay longer. There is your link, tr realtraderswebinar.com forward slash Hubert. realtraderswebinar.com forward slash Hubert. First 25 folks. You can also call the office, area code 859-963-3445. It is in your chat box, and I will text it to you one last time. I do not want to take up any of the speakers other times. you got a really good lineup. Good luck. Hope it helps, and I'll see you on the next one.